All right, welcome back to some more Ark. So in the last episode, I kind of ran away from a lot of different dangerous stuff on the beach. We had some raptors, we had some T-Rexes, I got a Pteranodon. Uh, there was a fairy that came and um, was around the house and had to run away from him if I remember correctly, because he was not being very friendly. Um, so in this episode, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start getting some more resources. I'm going to take a look at something. I don't usually make this. At least not this early on. But I'm going to take a look at making a cooking pot. Specifically the S plus cooking pot. Now the S plus cooking pot will show me the recipes. And like what it takes to make certain things. And I'm going to be looking at some food. I want to see what I can make with this. Food is not usually something that you really need to worry about. You can get into it, and if I was really planning on staying here, I'd look into it. But really what I'm looking for is seeing if I can craft any food that doesn't require anything super special for ingredients. Um... Yeah, see, this needs vegetables, which I don't have. Nothing around here, really. Nothing around here really seems to be something that would help, because I need a lot of vegetables. Which makes sense, but... I didn't think that was going to be an option. I was thinking I was going to consume something that would allow me to survive colder temperatures more. Um, and that's one thing you could do, is you could increase your fortitude. Fortitude would make it so that you're more resistant to elements. But at the current moment, I'm thinking I want health. Because no matter what my element resistance is, it's just not going to be super useful. Um, if I'm going somewhere with extreme temperatures. Armor is better for that. So... How many narcotics do I have? None, really. What I really need to do is get an herbivore. And we have this Theomia saddle. So I think what I'm going to do is get just a few more narco berries, and I'm going to try to tame this one. It's literally right outside my house. And I believe, I, I don't ever really use them, but I believe it'll help me get berries better. 20 right now will do enough for this. We'll split this stack in half. Transfer, and then light fire. Perfect. Alright. Where are you going? Alright. Pretty fast, I'm sure. Yeah, he got some movement speed stuff. You only get thatch, is that what you're good for? Eh, he can get thatch, that's alright. Not really good at berries, but... Unless there's, like, a setting, but I don't think there is. No. They love to eat, but they're kind of bad at getting resources, it looks like. And that's kind of to be expected. It's an early game mount. It doesn't really do much. Um, it is known in the ARC community for it being the poop factory. If you feed this thing stim berries... It'll make just a bunch of poop. And then you can use this as fertilizer for your crops if you're growing crops, but that, I'm not really doing that, so... Not exactly useful, but, uh, you know, I guess I had the saddle, so might as well. Level... are you at 25? Yes, you are. Okay, we're gonna get the Parasaur.
I need to give my narco berries over again. Make as many of these as I can. Again, it shouldn't really be a lot to take this one down. It's only level uh, 25, so. All right, Parasaur. So all we're gonna use the Parasaur for is getting some materials, getting more berries. I do like my guardian Bronto being here, but uh, kind of being obnoxious too. Okay, Parasaur is just going to get us some berries. Now, the difference isn't absolutely huge, but you can see we're getting like 14 narco berries a plant instead of like three. So, it's a good margin higher. And that's what we're going to need. We're going to need lots of Trank for different dinos in the future. This uh, cheat for Gamma, Gamma 3, I don't know if I've done it before, is technically an uh, admin command, but that's because there's no Gamma slider in the settings. And I don't want to have to adjust my actual monitor brightness every time I do that. So... A lot of times when it gets to nighttime, I turn the gamma up just a bit. I still want it to be hard to see. I don't want to see it like crystal clear like daylight, but I don't want to be struggling to the point where I feel like I need night vision goggles. The Bronto is literally on my house. Is that a raptor? Yes, that is. Alright, so Parasaur got us like 400 berries, and we're gonna need a lot of health for him. I want everybody passive. I don't want them going anywhere. And we're gonna get onto the narcotics again here, and now we can make 82 of them. 83. Oh, this one ran out of fuel. Well, good thing the spark powder is done. Put that in here, and now we're back to cooking that. But no, I saw a raptor up here. Raptor's gonna need more melee damage. And looks like when killing the raptor, we got some ramshackle versions of gloves, which just means they're gonna be slightly better. A little bit more insulation, a little bit more armor. Not really a huge, huge difference. There you are. You're only level 80. You're not a problem. Okay. Just occasionally have to keep an eye out for things since we're in a slightly dangerous area. I don't know what that was. I don't know if you guys saw that flash, but that was weird. All right, so what I wanted to do in this episode, I've lost track of time just how long it's been. I'm going to guess it's been about, oh, 10 or so minutes. Usually I have a timer to keep these somewhat short. So we have about 20 to 30 minutes here to explore a little bit and see what we're doing. So let's go pick up some green beacons. We got a couple on the ground. They're not that far. Usually green beacons are something that's not super helpful, but they're not too far away. So I might as well try. Narcotic and... Large storage, okay. One narcotic is not that useful. Oh, 
What do we have here? More narcotic and resources. Okay. Narcotics nice, I guess. We've got some good resources here. Holy cow. Wow, this is a lot of crystal, a lot of metal. And whenever you see something like this, it's always a pretty good idea to, to try to mark it. We also have some dangerous stuff. Are those those are saber cats, it looks like. Which makes sense. We're in an area where I would expect this to be dangerous. But I'm going to mark this on my map. We are at about... And I can't mark it right here because... You can't mark something when you're riding a dino, apparently. So we're at about... What? Uh, this would be 35... 64? Something like that. I'm just going to say 35, 65. And I don't know. I'll mark it as like a lighter blue. Change this to an ampersand. That. Sure. Close enough. Have I leveled up again? All I did was fly. Oh, wait. You know what? I'm probably getting a little XP from crafting all those narcotics back at home. That actually counts. Right. So I'm thinking we're gonna wanna build We're gonna wanna build somewhere near nearby some higher level difficulty spots. We don't wanna necessarily be at extreme risk though. It's a Ketzel. What level are you? 125. Ketzels are really hard to take down, but they're the kind of the best flyer in the game. Can't get that purple beacon because it's in the water. And this is somewhat dangerous because we've got a Spinosaurus. And we're now in the freezing. Okay. Freezing is bad because that means that our health is going to steadily reduce over time. We're just going to try to land here. I did not want to land near the Spino. And it looks like there's some stuff on the ground there causing a problem. I was going to say, it better not be cold over here. This is extremely dangerous. This is where T-Rexes and stuff like to hang out, but um, it's warm and I was freezing, so I'm going to just kind of hang out here for a second. I don't even think it's possible for me to try to get that beacon. I'd have to... Yeah, no, there's a T-Rex here. We've got a lot of dangerous stuff around here. And that's a saber cat. I need to move. Bye. One thing I could do is try to build in a cold area and then maybe build a fire and that would keep me warm and alive while I'm there. So one thing to also note about weather in this game is uh, raining, you're going to get colder, but also there are sometimes just cold days and hot days. 
And um, you can get that occasionally where it's like, it's raining and it's a cold day. And no matter what you're doing, your character is just cold all the time. Let's see. You, Tyrannus, a.k.a. a UD. UDs are a huge problem because they will invoke fear in your dino and then it'll not obey you and flyers just do whatever they want. I hear one, but I don't see one right now. We might be able to ninja this. Take that. Okay. It is cold. I am freezing. I am going to die if I keep this. Oh boy. I need to rest to get some stamina and then I need to book it over to the other island there because I'm freezing and I'm going to die. All right, as long as there's not an ice cube, I'll be fine. That's an extremely dangerous area to be. And you really need to monitor when you're on a flyer, you need to monitor your your um how cold your character is all the time. Because you can easily get caught up in the moment of whatever you're doing and just really get down low. My health was getting down. I have 200 health and I was down to 50. And that happened really quick. When I was getting that beacon, I was, I'm pretty certain I was higher than that, so... I think I was at least around 100. When you're cold, and this looks like it's a natural cold day, see how everything's all blue? When you're cold like this, your health is going to come back even slower. So. Got a shotgun, but guns are just not that useful in this. looks like to be a somewhat safe spot at the moment. Let's see if we can get some materials here. It's really hard for anything to break stone, except for, like, Apex dinos. If I get some materials here, I might be able to build a very basic structure or something in the colder areas. It'll also give me time to warm up. All right, we're going to have one extra wall, but that should be good enough. The Pteranodon may not like me riding on it. I'm going to have to drop something. Um, I can always get berries and stuff. I don't need those. Just in time, because apparently we have a raptor that decided to spawn. So, glad to be out of there. Granadon gets a level. How about in stamina? I got four levels. That and carry weight. Or not carry weight, uh, movement speed. Got some saber cats and wolves. I just gotta get a little stamina here. Let me fly a little bit higher. I'm already freezing cold, so I have to make this extremely quick. Doesn't seem to be this much right here. So let's see if I can get this down. One, two, three, four. We're going to need the campfire at least to try to keep us somewhat warm. I've got a little bit of wood. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to... That's not at all what I needed. Okay, 
We're at least just cold now. There's a gap, but it still counts as a house, so we'll be fine. That's a T-Rex. Can't really do anything about the T-Rex right now. I gotta leave. Gotta get out of the cold area, and we're gonna get over to the warm area. That way I can start to heal. I'm going into that area way too early, but the T-Rex won't really bother my house, so... Alright, and we're back. Uh, some metal there, and I'm working on some metal there. I'm just gonna move this stack of spark powder over here. Alright, so, I do definitely want to extend that house, and I would like it to be a little bit bigger, so. Stone house, I'm going to need just more resources in general. Now we hit level 56. And this is where we're going to learn flak armor. There is another armor set between cloth and flak, but it's chitin, and there's, I guess there's gilly, but, um, let's see, if I take a look at gilly, gh, yeah. Gilly needs organic polymer. You can't really get that stuff very well right now. Um, on this map, organic polymer is kind of difficult to get. It'd be nice, but it's kind of hard to get. Um, there's chitin. Which chitin requires actual chitin from bugs, which I don't have any. Anything that's required chitin, I've made with keratin here, so. 18 wooden spike walls. We're gonna get the seeds. Transfer them. The spoiled meat can just go in here. We're gonna let that make the narcotic. These berries, I've got the berries that really matter. I might keep just a few of the stem berries. And I'll take, like, maybe some of the red ones there just to get me a little bit. This meat that's cooking, probably good enough. We're going to give you just more carry weight because I'm betting I'm about out. And you don't like that, so... This stuff should help so much. It's going to give us a lot more defense. And the defense is huge. I don't think I'm going to be able to take anything down. Can make a sword. And I think I'm going to make a sword. Sword will be my basic defense. I've got a lot of crank arrows. I'm gonna try to repair that. We just need. Looks like I've pretty much taken all the metal with me now. It's fine. All right, Pteranodon, it's gonna have to do. I gave you a little bit more, and you don't necessarily like it, but you're gonna make it work. Those are cool. They're kind of like a more maneuverable pteranodon, but they just, uh, they're really hard to get. Because they run away as soon as you get close, so you can try, I think you can try to bowl of them, and it'll work, but, uh, it's just kind of difficult. 
so we're on an adventure now to go back to the ice house with everything that we got and hopefully hopefully we'll be able to survive long enough to kind of establish ourselves there Okay, so I'm in a really dangerous situation right now. Um, I tried to slow flap my way all the way over to my base. The T-Rex was still there, and my armor did not keep me warm enough. I couldn't even get to the house, so T-Rex was pretty much there. I couldn't really do anything. If I would have tried to get inside the house, I would have been eaten. Um, and the Pteranodon is just too slow to get me in and out of that dangerous area. I have my Pteranodon still, uh, but it had to force land somewhere because it ran out of stamina while we were above the water because it was about to freeze to death. So, um, I am at precariously low health and don't have a lot for, like, food on me or anything really to heal me. So, what I'm gonna do, I think... It actually wouldn't help that much. It would help more than, I guess, not doing anything. So, I'm going to get some very basic resources. I'm going to build an extremely basic house. I have three or 155 hide on me. I'm not even really going to make that much of a house. It's just going to be a spot, a bed, going to be a respawn spot. Okay, we're back. So I have waited through the night on this little island. I built a very basic like house thing here. It's not even really a house. It's just in case I die, I want to have a place that I can get away from everything. This has just the bare bones of uh, something just to keep me somewhat protected in case I need to get away from the elements or whatever. Um, that uh, parasaur is kind of stuck. It's funny. But yeah, it's just the bare bones of something to keep me somewhat protected in case I need to be. Um, it's got a couple beds so that I can respawn, and in the event I die, I can try to swim across the water there to get to the frozen area, although that would be very, very difficult, because I'm sure things are going to attack me basically on sight. I have some meat that's cooked, and I have, um, just enough really that I think I can make it there. The Pteranodon should fly quite fast now. This is much faster than what he was doing. I don't have my stone walls that I made, but that's okay. I can always make more stone. And so yeah, this is just gonna be kind of like a little outpost, and let's see if I can get over there now. It is approximately... It is... What is it? 15 degrees Celsius. I can't remember if there's actually a setting to change that, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna get over here and I'm probably gonna start to freeze. And I'm gonna have to bait this T Rex over the edge if I can. That way it can't bother me and I'll get inside my house and I'll build some defenses around my house. Should just be up here. There's the T Rex. Hi, friend. Looks like it was fighting something. Trying to get this here. Like it to come after me. If it runs after the deer too, that's fine. It's probably gonna be angry that I attacked it, but that can wait. I'm now inside my house, so that should save that. We're going to put the reinforced door on, just in case something happens. And I don't need this. I'm 
going to get a little bit of my health back. I've tried upgrading my fortitude a little bit. I'm at 6 fortitude. T-Rex looks like it's running off to do its own thing now, so we're somewhat safe. Uh, the next thing I want to do, if I can, is make a bed. I can. Good. Very basic bed to help me stay here. And then I am going to quickly, quickly, quickly see if I can get some sort of wall defense thing. Actually, T-Rex, would you mind just effing off and coming this way real quick? And T-Rex now can't get up here. Good. It might try all at once, but it can't get up here. That's the important thing. I can hear it stomping around, but there's no way it can get up here. It's very faint, but I could hear it there for a second. So we have 18 wooden spike walls that we're going to need to deploy. Let's see if we can get these out. Oh, something. Pteranodon. I don't think I got it. Oh, I did. And I desperately need some wood. I'm gonna grab a bunch. And, uh, yeah, I think we're kind of safe for now. So that's going to be it for this episode. We are now in a dangerous area, and it's really cold and hard for me to stay alive. I personally enjoy such a challenge, so I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. It's going to be difficult. I'm going to have to take some time, probably off camera, to get myself a little bit more established. But uh, I'm going to make this work. And... Uh, I think what's going to happen here is that I'm going to have to push for, um, I'm going to have to push for a different type of flying mount. So I'm going to go for the Argentavis. And I know I can make its saddle here. It's going to take some, um, some chitin and keratin. So I'm going to have to get that because I didn't bring any with me. And I don't think I had much at the other house. So, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle here. Um, I will probably just record when I go after that and capture that. And then in the next episode, I'll have that. And I'll kind of showcase it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, thank you for watching and hope it was entertaining watching me freeze.